it's time to enter the edge of the unknown with your host, Mark Henry. Be Divine, my guest this evening, a spiritual guide, and she is all the author of the Angelic Guidance System, Domino Angels, and her latest book, Angelic Guidance, which I have right here in my hands, and I've been perusing it as I have already read it once again, but I was thumbing through it today as I was waiting for guests to come over to my abode to celebrate Mother's Day, and boy, kind of a neat way to look at things. Um... Mother's Day. Mothers are kind of our angels on earth in a way, but we're going to be talking about the angels on high rather than those who have affected our lives in a physical presence. And B. Divine's got lots to say about that. She's been studying all forms of spirituality and healing for over 20 years. She offers clear advice and assistance from the angels, guides, higher consciousness, and God, the source of all. While you're listening to the show, you can play along at home. And I know somebody else and a podcast has stolen that term for me, and I always laugh, and we go back and forth about that. But uh, they, they say the same thing. Play along and play along at home. Um, but I really encourage you to do that this evening. DivineMiracles.com is B. Divine's website. So you can go and get more information about her and what she does. And better yet, hang out with me here on the Edge of the Unknown and uh, learn a little bit more about angels and angelic guidance for the next two hours. It is my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome again to the edge of the unknown, Be Divine, coming to us from Holy Cats, the other side of the world. It is great to have you on again. How are you today? Hi, I'm wonderful. How are you guys going? We're doing terrific. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully we're doing okay. So. <laughs> okay for yesterday. <laughs> that's, that's the thing that always kills me. And I think I've mentioned this in maybe the last time you were on. I have a friend that works in um, Siam, and I always wish him a happy birthday. But by the time it's his birthday, it was already yesterday and it's he's probably well asleep before he actually sees the message that I sent him so you're talking to me from yesterday and I'm talking to you in the future what a cool way to have a show <laughs> it's awesome no I'm really happy to be on and hopefully it records this time <laughs> we are rocking and rolling and we are not going to have that issue again it's, it's funny because I did have um, further issues with uh, hardware and and software and uh, we've made all the corrections for that so we were not going to have that problem you did air live the last time it just didn't record and I know <laughs> unfortunately and again I mentioned um, to everybody on Facebook and you know wherever I push out all my information if you're not listening to us on allonebroadcast.com you can always hear the show live on iTunes or TuneIn Radio, which is just TuneInRadio.com, or the TuneIn Radio app, or if you have the iTunes app on your phone, you can hear it live. If you miss any section of this show, go to All One Broadcast, find my show, and it will be up for your download and streaming pleasure afterwards. So, hey, let's get into the meat of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Oh. Angels and angelic guidance. We had a great conversation before. It was very spirited, and we hope that the conversation will stay the same way this evening as you're wrapping your week up or uh, you know, writing it down with me here on the edge. Let's start at the start. Um, number one, before we even get into how you got involved with an angels and angelic guidance, which we talked about before, but we might as well have a refresher, the whole concept of angels. Why would we think about angels interacting with human beings the same way that we might think ghosts would? Are ghosts and angels the same thing on the same plane even? Um, no. <laughs> what you find <laughs> what I wanna just make clear when we start is when I'm talking about angels, it's not necessarily from a religious standpoint. So when I'm talking about angels, I'm actually talking about positive energy moving forward. And of course over time we've given that positive energy names like Archangel Michael and Raphael and names like that. So we are talking about bringing in from the source of all, which some people call God, um, messengers, and those messengers are talking to us. And they're talking to us all the time, and it's called intuition. <laughs> that is when the angels are talking to us. But ghosts, on the other hand, are what we call earthbound spirits. So those are people that have actually um, been on earth before, had a, had a lifetime on earth, and they uh, have passed over and not quite ready to go into um, the other side properly. So they're, they're here and they're still earth, what we call earthbound. So they're, um, you know, what people might call hauntings or things like that. It's really just this particular spirit trying to get someone to help them get to where they need to be, which is 
towards the light and where the angels are and where God is and all of those things. So it's their choice, even in death, where, what they're doing. It's their, always their choice. So, yeah, so when I'm talking about angels, it's all the positive energy and the different attributes of that positive energy moving forward. And ghosts are the earthbound spirits. <laughs> so I hope that's a little bit clearer. No, that's fine. And that's a, a, a great way to kick things off because, you know, making things clearer is really what I think everyone who is interested in the paranormal really wants to do. Whether we have these solidified answers at the end of the day, we still want things to be a little bit clearer in the mud because we don't know all these things. I mean, it's, it's, it's a different thing to say um i believe and i know yeah and i think exactly. that's really you know i mean it, it's it's kind of it sounds like such an elementary thing to talk about but it really is the way that we have to approach all this so so let's talk a little bit about the idea of angels and how you got involved with the study of angels and again your book angelic guidance um really does a very good job of breaking down a lot about angels that I think a lot of people might gloss over because really, honestly, for the most part, I think it would be safe to say and make this generalization as much as I hate generalizations. When we think about angels, we think about the way we grew up in a church setting, in a religious setting, and there's more to it than that, right? Yeah, sure. Well, most people uh, do find angels in that way, especially if you're in the Catholic Church, you would have heard of Angel Michael, Archangel Michael and Raphael, all these different angels that have different purposes. And I myself was raised a Baptist. And so as a Baptist, we don't generally look too much towards the angels for information. It's always going back to Jesus or the things in the Bible. Um, but as a religious person when I was growing up, it was very, very um, scary to start to look into, say, for example, something like tarot cards and um, doing readings for people is just so naughty, <laughs> you know, when you're a religious person or brought up that way. So I had to learn to be really true to myself and think to myself, no, I'm, I'm just not satisfied in the church system. There's something off here. And that, that was when I was younger. I felt that there was something not quite right about it. I didn't like it. I knew that we all could we all could speak to God. We all had a right to speak to God and we just had to do it. We just had to be talking. And with that, I started to learn about angels and uh, how that we could talk to them also because they are what is known as God's messengers. And little did I think that they would ever talk to me in return <laughs> um, because I was expecting some sort of loud, booming voice, you know, to be talking to me if it was really from the angels, right? So uh, when, I, when I worked out that, no, this is my intuitive gut feeling and that's how they're, they're talking to me, it was completely different and I started to realize, no, I've been doing this all along. I've actually been talking to them without even realizing it and receiving their messages. So over time, I tried to develop a way in which I could teach other people to do this and be talking to them and and feel their presence and feel their messages by themselves in an easy, simplified way. And so that's why the book came about. <laughs> sure. It took a long time to get there um, because I myself, you know, had to get over um, all of the negative thinking throughout um, religion and churches and, um, you know, I must be really bad for doing this. I had to get through all of that myself and a lot of people go through exactly the same thing. And, and just realize, no, you've got to stand true no matter what anybody thinks. And I think that is the really, a really hard part for everyone to get to. And I would think that especially someone who is, I want to say, knee deep in religion and they really you know, push that and this is our belief and you need to believe the same thing. It's got to be difficult for them to understand or even think uh, about considering the concept that you're talking about. I'll use uh, George Carlin, uh, an old stand up bit that he used. Um, you know, he was like, you never really heard about angels you really only heard that they were like these tall dudes, kind of, you know, really white robes, maybe some wings and, you know, everything was in heaven. And it was easier to just kind of gloss over that rather than imagine the devil and the fallen angels and all the other stuff that was negative. But mm. from, a, from a religious standpoint, we don't really talk about the angels too much. They're kind of mentioned here and there in the Bible and in other texts, but no one really spends a lot of time on it. And, you know, if that's your main religion and that's really where you're basing your faith, why bring into anything that you're talking about as a, a vehicle of further discussion? 
Yeah, I know. Well, the thing is, I've actually spoken to my dad about this and, you know, being the big religious Baptist. And he said to me, no, no, no. He said, like, you know, we <clears throat> we don't focus on the angels. We focus on the Bible. And I said, why is that? And he said, well, we're, it's a little bit of shady ground. You know, we're not really sure if we're supposed to be talking to them or not. And he said, we really don't want to upset God and, and have to go, you know, maybe into hell because we're doing something wrong. So we just keep it simple and keep it down the line and keep a narrow way of life. And so basically what's, what's behind everything is fear. You know, everyone's frightened of what will happen when they die instead of living the best that they can. You know, they're frightened of all of these consequences and punishments. And it just doesn't happen. I mean, we punish ourselves. Um, worse in, on our own in our own life, you know. And uh, when you get to the other side of things, then you've got this beautiful choice of, of going to the source and you just feel this unconditional love. But that while we're living, we get into these fears and whether it's fear of religion or fear that the angels won't even talk to you or fear that you're going to displease somebody so it stops us from actually being completely true to ourselves. And, and honestly, from your standpoint, and if you, everybody, you know, if you can, pick up the book Angelic Guidance, uh, Be Divine, my guest here on the edge of the unknown. DivineMiracles.com is her website. Um, this is a very different approach to it because, again, I think a lot of times when, you know, we go to church, we get the rules, we get the, hey, this is the way you need to live your life. But this whole approach that you've got is more of an explanation of why you should make these decisions or at least you know, things that you should consider and the things that are around you that might be helping you to go in the right direction. Yeah, that's right. And again, we're talking about trying to keep things simple and getting people to accept themselves and understand that it's okay. You know, these, these things have been around since the beginning of time, this positive energy, um, the law of attraction and things like that. So whatever you're drawing towards yourself, you are creating. And so, so many people have so many issues in their life and they keep going around and round and round and round again and facing these same obstacles. And so I'm offering them a way, hey, if you actually just change your way of thinking just a little bit, then you will see the difference start happening in your life, you know, for the better. And it will actually it spur you on into action. You go, wow, all I needed to do was change that old way of thinking into a more positive note, note. And before I know it, well, just by activating a more positive uh, lifestyle, I've brought in the angelic support and away we go. We've got this, you know, interesting life unfolding. And I think that that is what people are looking for. They're always looking for an answer out of their, their issues and a place to belong and feel that they're not always doing something wrong. And, uh, yeah, so I wrote this book and it was completely different to anyone else's book and that's how, how I like it as well. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, just, just wanting people to know that you're never, never alone, you're always supported if that is what you choose in life. When you first uh, realized that you were being, you know, having the ability to converse between an angelic form and, and, and not something that is, we talked a little bit about the difference between ghosts and angels and, and that sort of thing. And again, we'll delve further into that as the show goes on into the night. Um, what was the first thing that you realized or that was, became apparent to you rather that you were speaking to angels and it wasn't something else that a lot of other people claim to be talking to. I talk to the dead. I talk to people's, you know, passed on cats and dogs and that sort of thing. What stood out for you that you realized, hey, maybe I'm talking to something else that's a completely different plan and a different plane than everything else? Yeah. Well, in my experience and, and, you know, doing readings for people for over 20 years, I've done mediumship readings where you have, I have spoken to people's um, loved ones that have crossed over and I have spoken to um, all kinds of spirits and, and also removed them from people's houses and things like that. There is a much denser energy in someone who has already lived on earth than there is with the angels. With the angels you feel light, you feel, um, you know, proud and excited about yourself and you just feel positive in every direction. You feel complete unconditional love, something that you don't feel in any other way from anything else. So the difference is this, when you know that you're talking to the angels, it will always be a positive, moving forward, unlimited, loving kind of a feeling and, and message as well. Whereas when you're speaking to something um, of a lower energy or some, some a kind of a spirit thing, they don't have all the answers. They don't have 
um, all the information. They're focused on uh, the person that I may be giving the message to. They're focused on them and wanting them to to move forward in their life. But it's it's a much different feeling. So. In answer to your question, it is a, a definite feeling that you get where you know this is different. Uh, this is this is you know beautiful and un- unconditional love, and it's it's just a, an amazing feeling that you that you have. Why do you think a lot of folks reach out to angels for the guidance that you talk to, or you know that you talk about in your book, Angelic Guidance? What is the a lot of people are told, no, you can only pray directly to, especially if you're Christian. We'll just use that as the example here, and, and mm-hmm. you know, before we get into trouble with anything else, um, <laughs> you, you, you pray to Christ, who then will relay that to God, and 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 then back down. You know, a lot of times, uh, especially in the Catholic Church. Um, they will say, pray in the name of a saint, pray in the name of, uh, of this angel, and the prayers will be received. What is the difference between praying straight to Jesus Christ, the Savior in Christianity, or praying to an angel, or, I don't want to get into saints, but praying to an angel. What's the difference? Well, for, for starters, the angels don't want you to pray to them. <laughs> they want you to talk to them, but not pray and ask them to do <laughs> things for you sure. so it's kind of kind of hard to explain because uh, you know you you um, are asking for assistance okay so you're asking the angels for assistance in your life but the difference is you're not begging them to do anything for you what you're doing is you're thanking them for enabling you to do it there's a big difference there so you know they, they can only work with your energy so unless you're moving forward in your life and asking things in a way of expecting there to be a result you may not see the result, but if you so if you're playing, please, please, angels, please make this happen for me. It's it's not going to work because you need to be pushing something forward. Um, you know your energy needs to be moving forward so that things can then eventuate. Then you'll see how they have been helping you to get what it is that you are after. And quite um, frankly, I, I would assume the same would be to you know for anybody who's a Christian and prays to uh, Christ or, or or you know whatever yeah. that, that there is still a lot of responsibility on our end, not just hey make this Definitely. happen and I'm going to sit on my butt and wait for everything to change. Exactly, you can't win the lotto by sitting on your butt, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got to get a ticket. So, you know, whether you choose to speak to Jesus, or, oh, I'm always talking to Jesus as well. Whether you choose to speak to him or the angels, it's always got to be with this kind of moving forward in your life. Okay, so I'm willing to do this. Can you allow this to, to happen in my life if I do these kinds of things? But then some people, um, they, if they don't get what they want straight away, then they don't want to talk anymore. They don't believe it anymore and they give up. And the thing is, how do we know that that wasn't the answer? So... Say, for example, you were going out with some girl and, um, you know, you really desperately wanted to be with her for the rest of your life, but it didn't work out. And maybe it was because there was someone even better on the way, but you were like, no, I asked you to help me with this and it didn't work. Well, I can't interview with someone else's free will either. So, you know, they were possibly bringing you a solution, but you weren't seeing it at that time. And then when you do go on in your life and you do meet somebody else, you go, whoa, I'm so glad I didn't stay with that person. <laughs> Right. So, yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about humility, because I know that comes up in a lot of circles uh, when we talk about religious things um, and, and just different ways of approaching whether we're talking to our higher power or, you know, in this case, talking to angels. Mm-hmm. How how does humility work in that conversation to actually have something viable to move it away. I mean, honestly, you might be praying for something that you'd really like or something that you wish would happen or something that you want to happen. But at the same time, you don't want to be that jerk that just says, I want A, B, C, and D, and this is when I want it, and it's got to happen at this time. You know, the humility has to play some kind of role in speaking to angels. Yeah, sure. Well, like I was saying, you know, you you have to just talk to them and, and talk to them in such a way that you are expecting a result. And it's not begging, begging, begging for help. And this comes over time. I mean, even when I was first learning, I was just talking to them exactly like praying to them. And I realized that that was the wrong way to go about things. And so people will find their own way to talk to them. But you do have to get yourself out of the mix 
You have to say, okay, what is the most benevolent outcome for me? That's very hard for people to let go of control. They're controlling this outcome all the time, saying the most benevolent outcome for me and everybody around me is just beautiful, you know. But um, people get into this mode where it has to be a certain way, certain way, certain way, or it's just not happening at all. And then you get the type of people that tell you, oh, no, you must be asking you know, in this way and in that way, or you're not going to get a result and, you know, an answer. And some, some of the things are just ridiculous. So, yeah, you do have to just pull yourself back, think about what you're saying, you know, think about the big scheme of things without limiting yourself on anything and using the right kind of, um, of way of, of talking to the angels so that you can then feel their response and know that it's working with you and, you know, move, move toward the goal that you're actually asking for. So it's hard in the beginning. It's hard in the beginning to get yourself out of the way. <laughs> Which, I, I think, honestly, that's good advice for any number of things in, in life is getting yourself out of your own way. Yeah. We've, we've established that there is an ability to speak to angels. Is this something that needs to be developed or is this something that anyone can do at any time? Yep, anyone can do it at any time. You just got to start talking. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I probably so, haven't spoken to any angels lately. I can't shut up. <laughs> so what I explain to people is, you know, they know you. They know um, what you've been through. They know um, it's almost like they see you with these badges of honor that you don't see. They see everything your soul's ever been through. They see how you're vibrating. They see you in color and sound. And that's how they see each other also. So... When you're talking to them, you just say, look, dear angels, you know, this has been my day. You know me. This, is, this has been what my day is like. Can you, can you help me understand what this may be or what, why this may have happened? And what a good idea is to do is before you go to bed, put that question out or write it out on a piece of paper and put, put it underneath your pillow. And during the night, you may get, you know, visions or uh, inspiration during the night. You wake up in the morning, you'll understand why you know, things had to be the way they had to be. So this, just doing it gently like this and not in a um, manner that might freak you out because, you know, the, <laughs> the angels don't want to scare anybody. So they're not going to, to um, show themselves to you as, you know, these massive beings of light if you're not ready for that. Um, so, yeah, you've just got to start talking to them and talking to them all the time. Like, you know, you don't have to say it out loud so people think you're crazy or anything, but even mentally conversing with them, they can hear that. They can understand that. I mean, they actually speak to us telepathically anyway and with our feelings. So just just keep talking and you'll notice a difference happening in your life. It'll start slowly and then and when you notice those small signs, then you'll start getting the bigger ones. I'm going to grab an email here. This uh, came through. There's actually a couple before, but uh, Kelly from Lockport writes in, um, not sure if this was covered the last time Be Divine was on, but can you talk about the different ranks of angels? Thanks. Love the show. Kelly, thanks for being on the edge. Good question. <laughs> okay. So again, we're talking about the religious ranks of the, uh, <laughs> of the angels. Sure. And there are different, what they call different choirs. And uh, what they're saying, what they're trying to say to you is that the closest, the closest um, rank of angels to us is actually called the angels. And then it moves up to the archangels and goes right on up. And a lot of people um, focus on these, these areas because they believe that the, the ones that are closest to God that we just can't talk to, you know, we just can't ever get to. And uh, it's just not true at all. What I believe is that the, um, the only reason we have ranks or hierarchies within the angels is because of our own, what we've put there ourselves, or what we've known from religion or all those kinds of things. Sure, I think right. it was Thomas, Thomas Aquinas, I think, um, from the Catholic Church, was the one that actually put them all into sort of sections. Mm -hmm. um, but the angels themselves say, look, we don't even have any need for names. We don't have any need for ranks or anything like that. We see each other all as equal. It's people that put those labels and, and put those ranks on us. So, yeah. <laughs> now, I have to ask this because the revelation of St. Thomas 
um, is one of the books of the Bible uh, that, I don't even want to say book, but it, part of the gospel that is not recognized by the Catholic Church. And maybe you can check me if I'm wrong, but I believe Thomas Aquinas in, in the Revelation of St. Tome um, is the same. So why would Thomas Aquinas be able to you know, come up with this hierarchy of angels, but anything else that he had to say about the gospel of Christ be not okay with the the Roman Catholic Church or the you know the, the Christianity in a whole, and maybe I just made a fool of myself by not knowing all my Christian um, yeah. history, but it, it it sounds like it's the same guy to me. Yeah, well, that's right. And there are just things that are taken out of the Bible, especially about, because, you know, the, uh, Thomas talks about reincarnation and things like that. Now, you right. can't have that because that's totally against, you know, everything that's in there. So and that's what kills me. Yeah, it's like, we, okay, we can talk about the angels and we'll rank them this way, but hey, wait, don't say that over there. It makes me question yeah, exactly. all of it. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, you know, we, we we don't even have the original document or, or Bible with us, you know. I mean, right. we, it's been changed so many times, right? right. <laughs> so who knows what's missing, really? So, uh, yeah, I don't understand how, you know, it's okay to say one thing, but you're not allowed to say anything else. But, hey, we like that idea, so we'll use that. <laughs> And that's the thing. It's we, we'll all agree on it because I'm I'm pretty sure, and and I, I this I am pretty sure there are over thirty different accounts of um of the gospel, and only four are recognized. Obviously, you know, sure. officially by the church. But I, it, and I hate to say this, and I, I am a Christian for the most part, and I do bring in other thoughts and ideas from other religions. So maybe I'm not totally the the Christian that I should be, or whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm doing my best here, man. Well, but yeah. <laughs> right. But when you look at it that way, it's it's the four versions that agree. And does the same sort of thing come up when we discuss angels and that hierarchy that you just described? Is it because that a bunch of people got together and just said, yeah, that's the way it should be? And maybe we should be looking at it in a little bit different light and maybe questioning a little bit more of who's who yes. in the world of the angels? Yeah, sure. I mean, because we're not just talking about the angels coming from the Bible either. I mean, this is ancient from Babylonian times, Sumerian times in ancient Egypt. You know, you see all these carvings of, you know, winged beings from, from you know, another world or another place. And uh, they've got some fantastic stories in all of their, you know, literature as well. So, I mean, the hierarchy, like I said, the angels have said to me, look, you know, we have no need for a hierarchy. We mm. we see everything is equal. It's man that likes to put labels on things. <laughs> and, you know, God is not religious anyway. So <laughs> he's not looking down and going, okay, I'm going to favor them or I'm going to favor them or that's right or this is right. It's just love for everybody. And that is the main message that the angels have also is, look, let's just forget about all this and let's just focus on, the, the portal of light that you are on the earth, okay, what what makes you the happiest? All right, well, that's what you're supposed to be doing, you know, not focusing on all of these little bits and pieces that can get you stuck for a very long time. <laughs> you know? you yeah. can just sit there and ponder over things for days and where did it really get you, you know? We are up against a break, but I want to I want to continue this discussion before we do that because I think that's really interesting. Do we as human beings put more blockades in our way to get to a higher understanding, whether we do it ourselves or because someone else, you know, throws that hurdle in our way? Yeah, we do it all the time. We overanalyze everything that we do. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many people come for advice and they're they're actually not not even just asking about themselves, but they're asking about every Tom, Dick and Harry that they know and they're losing sleep over it. You know, this just doesn't help you to move forward in life at all. And it's not, it's, you know, those people are getting your power and your energy to them so they feel fine. And I often say to people, well, they're sleeping fine. How about you, you know? <laughs> you know, you're losing sleep over something that's not even part of your life. And I think that this happens so many people, they're just always in their head. And uh, oftentimes I hear the angels say, live in your heart. What is, what is your heart saying? Is it really asking you to ask about and, and worry about all of these issues? Or is it just saying, look, focus on who you are and what you're doing, and then everyone else will also do the same? And this shouldn't be seen as sacrilegious. This should be something that should be welcomed. 
That's right. I mean, we we are all, you know, we are all created by source energy, which is God anyway. So we're all on the same playing field here. There's no one more gifted than anybody else. There's no one more special than anyone else. We all just have to start to realize that for ourselves. And, you know, except like for me, I, you know, if, you, if your thing is religion, well, you are blessed because you are following what you believe in. If that's what you truly believe in, that's wonderful. But I believe that, you know, we shouldn't um, pick people out and say, okay, those people over there that are doing that, they're heathens because, you know, and they're going to go to hell and these people over there are doing that and, you know, that's just wrong and they're not talking to the same God that I'm talking to. And, you know, we shouldn't put people in those boxes Maybe we'd get along better. <laughs> Probably, if we weren't thinking that we were always right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so hey. it's, all, you know, it's all about accepting everyone for who they are, but moving on and minding your own business, really. Moving on, living your own life, and doing what you feel is happy without feeling that someone's going to be watching and what are these people going to say and I can't do that because I might upset somebody. This, people, And I used to do it myself, so there's... People doing it all over the world. That's all they do. <laughs> and, well, you know what? I think it's because it's the way we live our lives. And I, I am not above this. I do it too. I'm driving to work. This idiot doesn't know how to drive. Get out of my way. You're doing it wrong. You know, you're doing this wrong. You didn't know how to write that sentence. You didn't do that right. We do it yeah. so much that when we finally get to a place where we want to remove ourselves from our, you know, day to day, whatever we're doing, when we want that enlightenment, we're still thinking the same way. That has to be the biggest downfall. Oh, definitely. And it is, but you know, everyone's the same. You know, I've been upset in traffic as well and shake my fist at somebody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we fist? all do it. Oh boy, I got something else other than a <laughs> fist that I'm shaking over there. <laughs> but you know what I mean? We all get annoyed by life and annoyed by things and people that even when we're trying to live a normal, like nice life, a quiet life, we don't want any hassle. We don't want any issue. There's always going to be someone there that wants to stick, you know, stick their, their nose into your business or say something nasty or upset you in some way. But it's a way of going, OK, you know, that's your thing. And I'm not going to get involved with that thing. No judgment from me and, and move forward. And I think, you know, that is the hardest, one of the hardest things that people have to learn about themselves is, you know, if you don't want people to judge you, then you can't be judgmental either. And you've just got to accept people for how they are. And OK, you're having a bad day. Let's just move, take one day at a time, move forward. You know, it's it seems sounds simple, but it's really hard in reality. <laughs> I cannot believe we are this far into the show already. This is flying by, and it always seems to when you are on. Yeah. Be Divine, yeah. my guest here on the Edge of the Unknown, DivineMiracles.com. Check out her work, and again, her latest book, Angelic Guidance, a four-part four part guide to easily connect with the angels and their messages for you. We're going to continue this conversation. We would love to hear from you as well. 717-298-7460, the way to get on board. The Edge of the Unknown at gmail.com. More emails are already in the email bag, but hey, you can also catch me at allonebroadcast.com in the live chat room. We've got a question there as well. Much more coming up here on the Edge of the Unknown. Thanks for hanging out with me on a Sunday night. 717 298 7460 is your way to get on board with my guest, Be Divine Angelic Guidance. We're talking about angels tonight. DivineMiracles.com is the website that you need to go and check out for more information. And uh, hey, we'd love to hear from you. The Edge of the Unknown at gmail.com. We do have some emails that we need to get into. And uh, you know, we might as well just jump right back to that right now. And of course, I've got 18 million different windows open. And I've got to go back here and get over this. And we're going to do that. And let's ask a question from... Um, Annie, and again, oh the boy, the how <laughs> it's it's amazing when we're talking about religion and angels because they kind of do go hand in hand. Um, Annie writes in, "I was brought up to believe that when humans die, we all become angels. Do we become angels along the lines of those that help or work with other humans? How does all of this work?" Annie, great question. Thanks for being on the edge. Okay, <laughs> all right, this is a good one. Hi, Annie. Thanks for your question. Um, what happens is that when we pass over, we do become guides to our loved ones. And I think that that is where people get mistaken because oh. um, the angels in themselves or what I know to be the angels and their energy, 
they haven't had a soul, so they haven't had a life on earth. So in, in order for us to become angels, then we wouldn't be able to have a soul. We'd have to be, you know, living in spirit world all our lives and all that kind of thing. So when you do pass over, you will become a guide somewhat and, you know, sharing love and um, encouragement from the other side, but not as an angel in itself, no. And that's interesting because I think that's really the way I mean, I, I, I grew up in uh, the Presbyterian Church. I converted to Catholicism, went back to the Presbyterian Church, which is where I'm really kind of hanging out right now. Um, and again, as I mentioned, I kind of mix other things and other beliefs and with where I'm at. But, you know, when you're a kid, that's what they always tell you. Well, when you pass away, you go to heaven, you get your wings, you get your halo, and you'll be able to come back and do good deeds. But that certainly from where what you're saying is not really the case other than being able to lead someone to an angel that might have a little bit more power, I guess, in what an awkward way to yeah. say. Yeah, so I guess in the sense of, okay, we become angels when we pass over just means that we've we've learnt our lesson and, you know, we uh, go through an awful amount of healing when we pass over and, you know, we do hopefully come back um, to earth with a different mindset or a different way of going about our lives. I mean, we know in life's history there's been so many horrible things that have happened and so many um, horrible people in the world and to think that they'd come back and be that horrible person again <laughs> would be horrible, you know. Um, so, yes, you would think that when you pass o over that you would uh, sort of become angelic in the way that you're sending love and you're sending guidance and assistance to people. And, I mean, some people want to think of it like that, and that's perfectly fine. Um, yeah, but I've always been taught that, you know, no, we become guides or um, we may stay ascended. So we may stay on the other side and actually become what is known as like an ascended master and, uh, you know, be, be really always in spirit from then on. So you wouldn't come back and have an earthly experience. You'd just always be um, on the other side guiding and, and teaching. I've always looked at it this way. God's looking for a few good men. I'm not one of them. <laughs> But I hope he doesn't. I hope he doesn't ruin my desire to be uh, a guy who comes back as a poltergeist that specializes in hiding car keys and TV remotes. <laughs> That's really what I'm looking for. <laughs> okay, we got that out of the way. Spirit. <laughs> 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 My name is Mark Henry. You're listening to The Edge of the Unknown here on the All One Broadcast Radio Network. Thanks for hanging out with me. A happy Mother's Day to you. If you are a mom, we are so thankful for our moms who are really angels on earth who have blessed us with their, their guidance, their leadership, and their love. And so, you know, what a great day to spend time with family as I did today. Not as much as I should have, but, uh, you know, it's it's just great to, to be able to say thanks for folks who let us uh, you know, down a really good path and, and were very encouraging and got us to where we are. So we thank all of the moms out there. 717-298-7460, the phone number for you to get on board, The Edge of the Unknown, with my guest, B. Divine, divinemiracles.com, the edge of the unknown at gmail.com. I'm going to read this email here. Um, this sounds really familiar. I don't know if we covered this the last time and it doesn't make a difference. Um, this one comes from Vanessa. My question is, how do I handle a coworker that has it in for me? It seems that anytime things are going well for me, um, in parentheses, I share very little at work due to this reason, she begins to stir the pot looking for any reason to get me in trouble, even trying to get others to speak negatively about me. I know that everyone has that annoying coworker to deal with, but she takes it to another level. I've been at my job over 15 years, so for several reasons, I'm not in a position to just up and leave. Vanessa, thanks for that question, but I'd like also to talk about how we can incorporate angelic guidance into that answer. Yeah, sure. Well, the first thing is that this other person that may be annoying her and upsetting her and speaking, that's all on them. I mean, you know, you can't give any of your attention in that direction. So as hard as it is, you know, you have to protect yourself. You ask for angelic protection around you. And you do whatever, you know, you do the right thing and you're always doing the right thing, then there's nothing that anyone can really say about you. And if they are, then that's to their detriment. You know, that will always come back on them. So obviously you can't leave your position, 
but don't give so much time and energy to that person either. So by you worrying about them and you um, thinking about them all the time, then you're creating a block to your own flow and to your own, you know, positive way in life. So, you know, I know that I know that it seems hard to just ignore it and just move forward, but that's exactly what you need to do because you are not going to just leave. So you've already worked that out. And, you know, you already know that this person, if they're talking about you, then they're possibly talking about everybody else as well. <laughs> and that's just the person, that's just who they are. So you're better than that. You're higher than that. You're on a different level than that. You have to just remember those things and keep striving through, like moving through and let her take care of herself. So this person will just end up, you know, something will happen with them or people will start talking about them and they'll be going through that same kind of thing. Not that you're wishing that upon them, but you're just moving forward in your life without taking so much interest in what they're doing. And that is really the only way forward. That's the only choice you've got. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just going to drive yourself crazy there, worrying. 717 <laughs> is the phone number for you to get on board. If we don't answer the phone number right away when you call in, or the phone line rather, um, please feel free to call back and we will get you on. Um, but again, because I am my own chief cook, bottle washer, producer, host, whatever other title you want to give me. Um, I've only got so many hands, folks. So if you do call in to speak to my guest tonight, Be Divine, please be patient and uh, we will get you on board the show. Um, I kind of wanted to ask something about this because what I've asked you so far this evening um, is about how we can reach out to the angels. Let's flip that around and talk about how, oh, actually, let's do this. Let's grab a call and then I'll get back to my question. What, is that okay? Yeah, sure. All right, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, you're on the edge of the unknown. Who's this? Hi, my name is Kurt. Hey, Kurt, how are you tonight? Pretty good. I'm calling you from Akron, Ohio, actually. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks yeah. for calling. In fact, I'm listening to you on my Wi-Fi radio that I have. Not the internet, but the Wi-Fi radio that picks you up. Even better. What's going on in Akron, Ohio? And what would you like to talk to uh, Be Divine about? Okay, and what's going on in Akron, Ohio? Is it sunny and 73 <laughs> degrees? And it feels good for a Mother's Day, considering it's been raining for the last couple of weeks and everything. So, but um, what I'd like to ask is, I was having a conversation, kind of a half-hearted conversation today, and it kind of struck a nerve with me. It was during a coffee social hour at church this morning. And something came up about discrimination in heaven, and that just kind of bothers me because I married someone who is Jewish and it bothers me to hear people say that if she doesn't accept Christ into her heart, she's not going to heaven. And I really have a hard time with that whole mm. thing because mm. as far as I'm concerned, heaven is not about discrimination. And I don't know if that's going above and beyond what you're talking about because this is my first time calling into your program. No, no worries. But it, I'm sorry. No, I said no worries. Oh, you're, you're fine. This is this is this is perfect uh, topic of discussion. Certainly. Okay. So, how do you feel about that? Do you feel heaven is inclusive or is it exclusive? You know that sort of thing. Because I'd like to think it's an inclusive place. Because as far as I'm concerned, whether you believe or you don't believe, whatever, it doesn't. You know, I'm not trying to step on anyone's toes. I believe no. we're all created by God, and God That's wants right. us all. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter what we are, what what label we give ourselves on earth. When we go to heaven, we are totally accepted. It doesn't matter. So I, that's upsetting to me as well that there'd be separation in the, you know, in the religious, in the churches where they say, you have to do this or else this is going to happen and this person needs to change their way of thinking. Otherwise, they're not going to be accepted. And I feel that that's totally wrong because, you know, God's love is abundant for everybody. And the fact of, you know, she needs to accept Jesus Christ. Well, he's always with her anyway. So she's right. already done that. She was she was born with Jesus in her. So, <laughs> you know right. what I mean? And so there's no... for that matter, And for that matter, we had a radio host here in the area who passed away about two years ago. Hmm. Um, Howard was his name. He died unexpectedly of a heart attack taking um, underprivileged children down to Disney World. And um, he was Jewish. He didn't want people knowing that he was Jewish, obviously, until uh, after he passed away. 
um, because he was such a power on the radio that there were a lot of people that might have been anti-Semitic, whatever. But huh. anyway, um, people kept saying, you know, you got to accept Christ in your heart. you got to accept Christ in your heart or else you're not going to heaven. Well, Howard, Howie, whatever you want to call him, he had a heart as big as all outdoors. And I don't know what he was like privately. I did know he was Jewish from a coworker that I knew very well from, from his radio station. Mm -hmm. And I just can't imagine that because he was doing these things for new, new adventures for underprivileged children in the area to go down to Disney world and doing at Christmas time, how he's helping hand to help underprivileged people in the area to have a nice Christmas or holiday season, whatever you want to call it, that, he didn't get into heaven. He seems like he was a nice person, and just because he was Jewish, people are saying that he wasn't going to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, that's so sad. That's so sad. But, yeah, definitely he would have gone straight away. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, and it's unfortunate you know? that he had to pass away the way he did in an airport yeah. and, and underprivileged children on the way to the new adventures at Disney World. But, anyway, I'm going to let you go so that you can go on to the next person, and I want to thank you for taking my call. No, oh, thanks for well, calling. Thanks for talking. Awesome. Thank you. Excellent. Have bye -bye. a wonderful evening in Akron, Ohio. Thanks so much for calling. And hey, that you. You, gives you the ability to get on board with Be Divine as well. 717-298-7460 is the way to get on the edge of the unknown here on the All One Broadcast Radio Network. And I, I again, I apologize, uh, Be Divine. I have no idea what happened there. All of a sudden, you were gone. Oh, well, that's yep. the way things work. <laughs> But you got so back, good. and what an interesting question, because, again, it goes back to what I was saying about, you know, we, we, we're always, like, waiting, or we're, we're talking about, how can I reach out to the angels? How can I hear the angels speaking to me? And what an interesting story about a guy who sounds terribly selfless, who is dedicated mm. to giving back to others around him, putting those people ahead of himself, but then hearing there's no spot for you, in eternal life. Yeah, it's, it's terrible, you know. And then to, to hear that he lived his life in fear because he was Jewish and he didn't want anyone to know and, and right. judge him. And then he was judged anyway. You know, who are we to judge anybody, you know? Mm, it's sad. And, and, and that's, I, I think that's where a lot of um, friends of mine who are, that lean more to atheists, uh, or, you know, an atheist theory or atheist background, they kind of look at it and they see that and they're like, well, that's kind of high BS. You know, I can't really get behind that. And it's so unfortunate because I think that a lot of that kind of rhetoric is not really the way that things really are. Or maybe I'm just a fool and I, I'm romantic <laughs> and I want everybody to get the best of what's coming to them. Well, maybe maybe uh, people just need to worry about their own soul instead of worrying about <laughs> what might sure. be happening to someone else's soul. You know, worry about what you're doing and then, you know, because it's horrible to think that people will put people in boxes like that. And if 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 the churches around the globe were more open to things and more accepting of people, then a whole lot more people would be going. Yeah. <laughs> right. And again, that's well, then it comes right back to, well, heaven's not big enough for everybody. Well, how, what kind of concept is that? It's like saying there's not enough room in the ocean for all the fish. Yeah, well, it's just a way of controlling the masses. I mean, by, by controlling you and saying that you, are, you have to fit a certain criteria in order to win. It's the same thing in anything in life, really. We've set ourselves up that way. You have to have this degree or you're not allowed to do this. You know, you have to finish high school or you're not allowed to do this. I mean, we've just been controlled our whole lives in one way or another, and now they're trying to control what happens. No wonder there's so many people that are so afraid of dying. It's not funny. I mean, it's inevitable. We're all going to croak, you know. <laughs> We're all going to die sometime. So that's inevitable. So we need to get over that and say, okay, you know, when I pass away, it's just going to be a wonderful experience. Why does it have to be such a damning experience? That's what I don't understand about different religions and how they put that on people and make them afraid. Before I don't we, think it should be like that. Now, before we do take a break, I was just going to say, why are we always... It's kind of interesting because I mentioned to the, the gentleman who just called um, that I want to have someone to come on and talk about uh, the way that we're censored and the way that, you know, people have been censored for a long time and the things that the government does. I, I also look at 
the way that religion works, where we're not allowed to, to feel the way we want and we're not allowed to feel good because a lot of times we're just being told how bad we are or the bad things yeah. that might happen to us if we don't fall in line. Yeah, and it's just totally nonsense. <laughs> but the thing of it is they've always got that fear over people because they say, okay, but when you pass away, if you don't believe in this, then, you know, I would rather believe in that and find out I was wrong when I got to the other side than believe what you think and find out everyone else was right. You know, that <laughs> right. was one of the excuses my, my dad always had. And I'm like, what a way to live, you know. I mean, although I can tell you that I've done many, many past re life regressions on people and they've seen the death, they've seen what happens when they go to the other side, every single one of them is exactly the same. There's been no hell, there's been no fires or anything like that. You can say that. But it still gets to a point that, you know, when you're going to die and say on your last day on earth, you may still be a little bit apprehensive because of all of the things you've been taught, you know, throughout your life. And I just think that's such a waste of time for people to be worried and sad and frightened, you know, and controlled. And I think we need to have this freedom within ourselves and break free. And the only way we can break free is with our mind. <laughs> your mind is your freedom, it's your escape, it's the key that unlocks the door to everything. So you can either let someone control your mind or you can do it yourself. I actually saw something and I, I was trying to get the actual wording. Uh, the, the, oh gosh, I want to—I don't even know where it is. The, the Church of Orange, I shared it with some other folks. And anyway, this orange church of whatever had this really, really terrible sign put up um, outside of their church and it just listed off all these people who are not going to be able to go to heaven and it was skateboarders surfers artists singers oh composers God. right and I, I i actually put it in a skateboarding forum because i'm an old I'm, I'm, I'm god i'm getting old but still skateboarder <laughs> and and i said i put it up in there and I, I threw it up because it said skateboarders and surfers and i said well you know at least we'll all be together <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, right on. Like, go. okay, fine. Not well, <laughs> if we're all going to hell, well, I got company and I like you, so we'll go through damnation together. But what a terrible thing to think. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's terrible. That's terrible. awful. Hey, you know, we're up. People live their lives like that. Yeah, and that's, oh God, that's even worse. When you're trapped under that, you're under somebody else's thumb. How awful. I've got a good yeah. question that I want to bring up. I have a good question. I just patted myself on the back. What a jerk. Uh, but we do have to take a break, and I've got more questions coming through email. The Edge of the Unknown at gmail.com. The Edge of the Unknown radio show. Uh, and if you find that on Facebook, shoot me a message there. 717 Two nine eight seven four six zero. We'd love to hear from you. I want to ask you something that's kind of a little bit different than what we've been talking about. We, we have talked about ghosts. We've talked about angels. I want to talk about the interaction between ghosts and angels and a lot of the places that we consider haunted, allegedly, throughout the United States and around the world. My guest this evening, Be Divine. Be Divine. Angelic Guides, DivineMiracles.com. We're back right after this on The Edge of the Unknown. Help the ghost and get to where it needs to be and move on to the other side properly and all of those things. But again, it's always about choice. Like, you know, that ghost may say, no, I'm not ready to go yet. And that's totally okay as well. But, um, you know I, know, I know a lot of people that go into these ghost hunts and they're wanting to talk to them and they're wanting to be frightened and all of those things. And they, they want to get some kind of recording and all of that, but they're not going in there with protection. And, of course, the ghost is having a ball with them, you know. <laughs> so if you're going in there with protection and you're asking for this guidance, then more than likely you can do a clearing on the place and that place won't be haunted anymore because, you know, the, the ghost will be like, okay, the angels are going to be there, so I don't want to be around them or I want to go with them or whatever it is. And so you will find that you won't have that happening. I'm going to jump into, we were having an audio issue there. God, this is, I have no idea. What is it with uh -huh. you? Every time you come on the show, I have problems. You hang up you on me. me. To talk. You hang up on me and a caller calls in. You, God, God, boy, I'm telling you. <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to, I, whatever the issue is, it's, we're, we're okay. So anyway. <laughs> 
Anyhow, let's get back to the, the other questions. Thanks for the answer to that, because that was actually my question. Um, do, 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 uh, the Edge of the Unknown Gmail. Um, okay, hang on. I'm going to skip down to this one. Um, Tina writes in, Do you believe in spiritual warfare and that angels and demons are fighting around us all the time, often over our souls? Tina, thanks for being on the Edge of the Unknown. It's a good question because this was another thing that came up when I was a kid um, growing up in the Presbyterian Church. The whole idea of the, these angels and demons floating around us, going at it, trying to get me to go one way or the other. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's another fear tactic. I mean, there's another thing you're worrying about. Oh, if I do the wrong thing, the demon's going to get my soul. You know, and I want the angels to have me. So, you know, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. You know, that's just all not happening. It's just a bit ridiculous. And, you know, I can understand how people get worried about those kinds of things because that's what we're brought up believing. Um, but it's just certainly not happening. Interesting that, and here's a really stupid coincidence. I came back from the break making fun of that church that I just told you about and read that over the air, the Orange Church of God. And yeah. that was the point, or at that portion of the show, that was the portion that no one heard until we came back and I asked another question. Am I angering angels? Am I angering God in some way by making fun of the Orange Church of God who tells me I'm going to hell because I'm a skateboarder? <laughs> no, we're just having technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> but how easy is it how easy is it to just write that off and say, Nope, demons, they're they're affecting you, Mark Henry. Um everything is getting screwed up. <laughs> You're because... being so naughty. <laughs> All right, well, from... yeah. I just made dinner for my entire family. I cut the grass. I did mulch the yard. You know, it's like all of a sudden <laughs> I'm being punished for something. Why are we always focused on, again, I brought this up in the last hour. Why are we so damn focused on pain and retribution instead of enlightenment and just furthering ourselves as human beings and being able to take care of one another? I know. Well, everybody does it in one way or another. We're always worrying about this, that, and the other thing, and it's just a waste of time. But, you know, once you start to actually focus on yourself, like I was saying, focus on your own journey and all those kinds of things, then you find that all of that kind of fear-related business dissipates. And, you know, it does take a while to get your mind over those things because, after all, that is what has been governing all of your actions all of your life is what will happen if this happens or this person will be upset or, you know, I'm doing the wrong thing by God. And, you know, really, God is all about unconditional love um, and we need to decide that that is what we've got in our lives as well. We've got unconditional love for everybody and that, after all, is supposed to be what... You know, even even those in, in churches and things, they start off in a, in a great way with, you know, bringing you in with the love and you get that feeling within you that you're accepted and then suddenly you're told how many things that you've done wrong. Well, you can do that to yourself till the cows come home. You know, you don't need someone else to tell you all the things that you've done wrong. And you just need to say, no, look, I forgive myself for anything that I might have done because God forgives me and I'm always doing the right thing. I'm always on the right path for my path. And I just have to accept myself. Accepting yourself is going to be the hardest task that anybody ever does because mm. every now and then those little voices are going to come up and say, oh, but, you know, what if, what if, what if. Forget about all that and just keep trying to move forward. And I know that it's difficult. And, you know, especially if you've come from a fear-based reality, it's hard to actually say, hey, that's just not right. I'm going to do this. Otherwise, you'll just stay going around in circles and going around in circles. And in the end of your life, you'll be like, well, wow, you know, I've wasted all that time worrying for what? You know, here I am at the end of my life and it never really mattered anyway. You know? Sure. Uh, the yeah. edge, of, yeah. The edge of the unknown is the show that you are listening to right now on the All One Broadcast Radio Network. You can find us a the live chat room. There's a little white box that says chat. Click on that and there's a number of other folks that are having a lively discussion there. You can shoot me a message and I'm going to get to one of those right now. Uh, Dave from Lovejoy asks, what's the difference between an angel and a saint? Be divine. That's for you. <laughs> okay. Well, a saint would have been somebody that had lived on earth and done wonderful things while they were on earth and the church has considered them a saint. Whereas, as I was saying before, an angel hasn't been 
to Earth, hasn't lived an earthly life. So it's completely different um, energy and entity. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, saints are saints of people <laughs> that have passed away and are now guiding us apparently from the heavens. And angels have not been people. And there's no way ever that they might graduate or be promoted any well, way possible? Well, they say, they say well, I have heard along the way, it depends whatever resonates with people, but, um, you know, we are trying to ascend to be um, like the angels. So um, always, always in spirit, in, in other words, like an ascended master. So we're, we're, we are aspiring to um, evolve with our soul into those levels of being just a guide to people, you know, not just on Earth, but on different planets as well. And um, that's what we're all aspiring to. Um, I'm not completely certain whether people can then become an angel one day. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but um, definitely we can aspire to be um, an evolved soul um, and, um, you know, always in spirit then, always guiding people. Let's get back to your book, Angelic Guidance. And you know, we talked a little bit about why you put this whole thing together. But this is not just a, a, another book to read and kind of put on the shelf. Uh, it's not necessarily a self-help book either, but it is a little bit of guidance on how to approach life. Talk a little bit about what all of the information in here does and how it pertains to what people might want to consider on a day-to-day -day basis as they go about living their lives. Okay, well, so the whole book is just it's set up in four different parts. And so the first bit sort of teaches you a little bit about different angels and how you might talk to them or even write to them. And the second part of the book is about the um, angelic guidance system, which is called Domino Angels. Now, this was a little card deck that I made, and um, <laughs> I started doing YouTube videos with my little card deck. And so when I first started to write this book, I thought to myself, okay, maybe I'll just do an expansion of these domino angel cards and I'll just write deeper meanings to each of the cards and so from there I ended up with a part of the book that is dedicated to that and then I also had a lot of articles from my website and so I've included some of those as well and a lot of channeled messages so with channeling it's me asking the angels for a message and then writing down exactly what they're saying to me and that all comes from intuition and feeling um, and then at the end of the book, I've got all about different areas of your life. Like some people want to know, okay, which angels do I call on for clairvoyance or psychic abilities and things like that. So I added that in the end there so that people could um, know some of these names, you know, traditional names. Uh, and some of the names that came through were also just given to me by different angels. And some of them are, are very strange, like... Metaphiel or Matrona or KBL, you know, these are names that we may not have ever heard of before. So I guess I wanted to keep it simple and easy and also so that you could just turn to a random page and get a message for yourself, which people seem to like to do. <laughs> Well, honestly, but that's kind of, I, I, it sounds like such a stupid thing to say because I know it's the old Saturday Night Live thing, uh, daily affirmations. But sometimes daily affirmations can be very powerful and something that not only you might get a message out of, but something that you might share and pass along to somebody else. That's not a bad well, thing. Well, that's right. That's right. Well, because like we were talking, this whole thing about all this fear and control and this, that and the other. And so our mind has been controlled in a certain way and we've had a certain way of thinking that we've always felt. So again, if we can learn to take control of our own mind and retrain ourselves into a more positive mind frame uh, with affirmations and, you know, with daily guidance, then, then we become the people that we are aspiring to be. You know, we become better people and we, we attract people that are more on our wavelength and will also guide us and help us and lift us and bring us forward. And we also attract different things on our path that, um, you know, are more beautiful experiences. And, of course, we're going to still get some issues come up in our life. But we'll see them in a different way. Our perspective of things will change. And that is why it's so important to do these affirmations because you're retraining your brain to think in a more positive outlook and a more positive way. And it's naturally the law of attraction is going to bring all that to you. Be divine, my guest here on the edge of the unknown on the All One Broadcast Radio Network. We've always 
been positive when you've been on the air. We have lots of laughs, and it's awesome. And I mentioned that yeah. next week is going to be a little bit different because a, a gentleman that I'm very familiar with who's been on my show before, Dr. C.K. Quarterman, we're going to be talking about fallen angels. So for every push, there is a pull. For the lightness, there is the dark. For the yin, you're, there is the yang. How often do you have to, and how often have you come across the angels that aren't so good and don't provide such good guidance? Never. <laughs> um, I'm a, I mean, I know that there is a lot of talk about fallen angels and, uh, you know, Lucifer's thought to be the first fallen angel in, from heaven and all of those things. And once again, that's another scare tactic for people. I mean, they start thinking about, oh, my gosh, I better not talk to angels in case I'm talking to a fallen one. And then <laughs> they go right back. You know what I mean? Go right back to the Bible. But, you know, I don't really believe in, in any of that, anything of the negative side um, of angels. I mean, I suppose you could focus on it. You could sit there and focus on it till the cows come home. But what good does that really do you? I mean, and you can find plenty of literature about it as well and plenty of paintings and this, that and the other. Um, and, you know, really it's up to people what they think. But um, I choose never to focus on that. I've never come across a fallen angel um, or anything like it, I guess, because I'm not putting that intention out there that I want that in my life. <laughs> I'm going to grab a quick question here. The edge of the unknown at gmail.com. Oh, hey, resident skeptic P writes in. Pete, where were you last week? Uh, Pete writes in, why would angels care one iota about what we do as human beings? Seriously, all that power and they spend it on us. And if we do have guardian angels, why do terrible things happen to good people? Sickness, strife, death. Where does all that power suddenly go when it's most needed? P, thanks for being on the edge. Yeah, well, angels can't control your life or control your free will, and they can't make things happen that are not part of your life path either. So even though it sounds horrible, those things that happen to people and the terrible wars and the horrible things and the needless death and all of that, those souls have chosen that pathway. They've chosen that life for themselves. And the thing that we find about that is after the fact, so after there's been like a horrible war or whatever, People come together in a community. People change towards each other. People start lifting up the towns and the cities and rebuilding, and people think differently. And these are the things, these are the reasons why people, or those souls, have done this. You know, they've, they've come in with that particular purpose in life, and this is why, for the greater good of humanity. So if that's not the angels helping, I don't know what is. But then again, you know, the angels just can't, um, as I said, they just can't come into your life, take over your free will and change things for you because this is all part that, you know, you've written what you're going to do in this life and, you know, you've, you've decided what you're going to be doing and they have to guide you on that, on what your blueprint of your soul is. They're guiding you on that. So although they can, um, you know, sometimes avert danger, like you've seen, there's been many photographs online of um, terrible car accidents and the people have walked away from it and you've seen this figure standing around, you know, the car crash. So they have averted things that haven't meant to happen, uh, but they can't just come in and completely change free will of people. It just doesn't work that way. And this is really a slippery slope. And and again, I'm not I'm not into the business of of ganging up and getting angry and getting other people angry. But when you when you're talking about free will, that's a choice that you've made. But if I choose to get on the throughway tomorrow to get to my job, and some knucklehead t-bones me and kills me. That really doesn't really make much sense if I had a guardian angel. And I kind of see where P is coming from here because I was just trying to get to work. And if that was my plan, well, holy crap, you could have given me a better sign and I wouldn't have gotten on the way. <laughs> I would have taken Route 5, you know. <laughs> but then again, that was if that was part of your lifetime to end then, then it would have happened anyway. Oh, you're breaking you know, my heart. If, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, okay, yeah. So, you know, again, it talks about your blueprint of your life. So right. So that perhaps was <laughs> your life journey to end. No, that's you know, what I that said. Point. I was like, oh, gee whiz, yeah. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. There are some things that we, we don't understand completely as humans. And, you know, um, even 
you know, even myself, when I'm talking to the angels all the time, like my brother was killed in a car accident. Oh, Why did that happen? Yeah. If that didn't happen, I wouldn't have reached out to spirituality and become who I am today. So perhaps, you know, his passing away was for myself and for my, my family members because we've all grown in different ways now since then. So, you know, there's always a reason behind something, even though it doesn't seem like it. There's always like a blessing in disguise, whether it's this generation or generations to come. Well, maybe that's my lesson from tonight and not being such an ass and bringing up something stupid that had terribly affected somebody else in the same kind no. of situation. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do? Um, I've got a couple of questions in the live chat room. And uh, Janice, who is having a hard time logging on, so it's not just me with the technical snafus tonight. Um, Janice asks, and we kind of covered this, but let's go over it one more time because she asks, how do you differentiate between the angels and spirits trying to connect with us? How do you keep it straight? Who is who? <laughs> Well, as, as I said before, you know, when you're talking to the angels, it's all about unconditional love. So if you're ever hearing um, messages like, um, oh, you know, you can't do that or, you know, that's not right, then that's not coming from, you know, an angelic perspective or from a higher source. So you just got to you got to make sure that if you're asking for the angels to be talking to you, that you're also asking for this protection around you so that that's filtering or away anything that may come in as a negative if you're talking to a spirit guide that is also very um, loving and very kind and very guiding you know in other words they're a spirit guide they're guiding you on your your bl blueprint of life but they're not going to give you all the answers to life either because that limits you in ways as well I know that there are a lot of people that do what I do and they're always saying, my guides are telling me this, my guides are telling me that. And some of it is really off, like I wouldn't be listening to it, you know, but that's their journey. So you've got to watch because, um, you know, you listen to what the message is that you're feeling. You know, listen to that. What, what, how does it make you feel? Does it make you confused or does it make you feel loved? Because when it's making you confused, it might not necessarily be coming from anything other than um, an earthbound spirit or, um, you know, even a guide that might not be right for you. So you've got to be careful. You make sure that you're protecting yourself at all times. I guess that, and that's kind of really the whole idea of talking about the paranormal is you're, you're very confident in what you're saying and you, you have a really good outlook on what you think is going to happen. It, maybe with me it's a little bit different, but still being open to thinking about things in a different way that, you know, maybe it was my time, maybe it was something that I did, maybe it was something that I was being pushed to, maybe it was something for the greater good. At the end of the day, when we talk about all of the stuff that we really have no finite answer for we should still consider all of it when we have this discussion yeah definitely <laughs> that's why we cover everything i think on this this one is excellent this show well, <laughs> we I get tried. to know everyone's exactly. perspective <laughs> other, other than the technical snafus i'll pat myself on the back and i'll see you next week thanks a lot okay take care <laughs> 717-298-7460 is your way to get on board with Be Divine, my guest here on the Edge of the Unknown. My name is Mark Henry. We've got another segment coming up. Is the Edge of the Unknown. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me on a Sunday evening, whether you're wrapping your week up or you're kicking your week off. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I am not a mother. Um, well, I've, I've probably been called a mother um, more than often than not. <laughs> but hey, what are you going to do? We're going to skip right over that. We'll gloss past that. Be Divine is my guest here on the Edge of the Unknown. Thanks for hanging out with me again late on a Sunday evening. And as we laugh and, and, and joke, uh, Be Divine is coming to us from, boy, quite a ways away. Are you back in Australia now? Or are you on the, I know you were traveling around, going up to Tasmania and a number of other places. Are you in Australia? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm back in Adelaide now. And I'm off to uh, Sydney at the end of the month. Well, how nice for you. <laughs> I, I'm going to Fredonia, New York tomorrow. Isn't that great? And it's <laughs> wow, haven't been there for years. Oh my goodness! Right, exactly. Oh. It's a hot spot. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> sidle up to your, uh, you know, local Qantas agent. And go. Hey, I gotta get a ticket to Fredonia, New York. And they're like, oh, really? <laughs> no, no. He, he's he. he you know, honestly, he'd look at you and go, "Yeah, Fredonia, right on, man. Hot, hot, <laughs> hot." hot. 
<laughs> sure. No, I love what I do. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is the edge of the unknown. <laughs> Silliness abounds. Seven one seven two nine eight seven four six zero. Your phone numbers to get on board. The edge of the unknown. The edge of the unknown at gmail dot com. And I was skipping through some emails because there were some ones that I will respond to personally. Um, uh, one that I actually asked again about my old bump music when I was on WECK. I will share <laughs> links. Try, I, I'm a big music guy too, and people used to love the bump music that I used to play on on a different radio station. I will have a blog about that. I I appreciate everybody asking. I'll get to it, but you know, there's other things that take precedence. Um, uh, and and there's another one that I will answer offline. But this is a really cool one that came from Erica. Uh, good evening, Mark. Kind of a different thought and question here. Can fallen angels be forgiven and repent just like humans? Can they turn into good angels? I'm approaching this from a Christian standpoint. Also, <laughs> while I'm thinking about it, are Christian angels the same as Judeo angels? Have a good night. Erica, <laughs> thanks for being on the edge. Be divine. That's all you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if, if you are focused on fallen angels, and okay, if there were, were such things as fallen angels, of course, they can always have this choice to go and, you know, be redeemed and go to the light and all the angels be singing, all that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, okay, if that's what you believe, then, of course, there's opportunities for them to, to have the, the healing that they need as well and move into the light. Um, all the different types of religions are all talking about the same kind of angels. Um, and uh, even though they may give them different names, it's all the same kind of thing. It's all uh, messages from the source. So these, this is like an intermediary between the heavens and earth. Um, so no matter what you call them, they will respond. Uh, as I said before, they don't have uh, need for names. It's people that have need for names and labels. But they will come whatever you call them. I mean, if you don't know what the name is, you just say, Angels, I need your help now. And that's enough, you know, to um, bring them towards you. So, yeah, hopefully that answers the question. <laughs> and I think that's fair. I, I really do. I think that has, you know, uh, again, questions about why certain things feel the same, but aren't really the same because I mean, everybody's coming at life from a different walk and they might think that, gee, this thing in my house is talking to me and boy, it is angels and they're telling me what to do. How scary is that fine line when there are people who go a little bit farther than where they really ought to be and might actually do some really negative things in life thinking that they're doing something positive. Yeah, well, I mean, that happens all the time, doesn't it? And, uh, like, you know, you can't control what anyone else is putting out there in the world. You can only control what you're really doing. So people that find these kind of people may resonate with some of the things that they're saying and um, and what they're doing, but then they may find themselves questioning that later on. So I guess the focus is really to be on yourself. You know, take if you're learning about angels or you're learning about spirituality in general, you know, look at all the different things and, you know, take what resonates with you and leave the rest. You know, make your own mind about whatever it is that you want to do. But be cool with that. You know, if you're not cool with something, then it's obviously telling you that it's not right. And even, you know, I feel that people um, that are getting these so-called messages from the angels or whatever and um, they're quite negative and quite damning in nature to people, you know, they must know, in, you know, in their heart of hearts, they must know that that's not quite right. They must know that. But then that is what they're choosing to do. So, you know, we can't, we can't force our beliefs on anyone else or whatever. But, you know, hopefully with some guidelines, people will start to, to, to wake up a little bit and, and steer away from the things that are making them feel controlled, fearful or negative. So hopefully that brings, this helps people in some way. Be Divine, my guest here on the Edge of the Unknown. Angelic Guidance is her book, a four-part guide to easily connect with the angels and their messages for you. DivineMiracles.com, the best way to get more information about Be Divine. She has been on this show uh, for a second time. Hopefully, she'll come back on over the summer, too. It would be much more fun to sure. talk about. <laughs> hey, as long as you're up for it. I mean, you're on the other side of the world. so <laughs> I have no, no, it's always fun. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we, we laugh, and that's what the show was about. 
about. I have to ask you this, and again, I wanted to focus on angelic guidance because that's what we're really pushing here. But one of my favorite books, um, and, and, and it was introduced to me when I was in high school. So this must have been maybe 88, 89, um, not too, too long ago. Uh, <laughs> the Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman. And Oh yeah, which is a terrific book. If if you haven't read it, I mean, again, buy Angela Guidance first, and then go <laughs> buy Way of the Peaceful Warrior. They made a movie out of it with Nick Nolte. It took some pieces of the book and put it into movie form. It was okay. It wasn't that great, but and I know Dan Millman gave it the thumbs up, and I'd, I'd really like to get Dan Millman on sometime to talk to him about it. But what a great story about a guy who is going through hell trying to find himself, trying to figure out what he was all about. And I wanted to ask you the parallel between looking inside for that angel and looking mm -hmm. outside for that angel. Is there a parallel there? Is it the same thing? Is it possible that the angels that we talk to are really inside of us all? We just don't realize it. Yeah, it's totally how it how it really is in a sense that we if we because as I was explaining before when we we hear advice from the angels it's always our intuition so that's our inner knowing you know so obviously they are a part of who we're really you know aspiring to be the knowledge is always there within us it's just that we often look outside of ourselves like you were saying we're always looking outside of ourselves for someone else to give us the answer or someone else to steer us on our course even if it is for the angels but even they are always saying to us look inside yourself and the answer is always there but no i want you to tell me there <laughs> you know we fight with it all the time but it's like it really is there if you get some inner stillness and inner peace and you know you think about things then you are answering your own questions from a higher dimension. I mean, it's, it's really as simple as that. So, you know, we're always drawing in this angelic energy, but it's something that's already inside of us anyway. It's something that it, it, it becomes ignited. It becomes more, in, more to life the more that we talk about things and the more that we grow and the more that we learn. So, yeah, that's a beautiful way of putting things. I guess the follow-up to that would be, and we've talked about this throughout the night, and, and maybe we're just beating a dead horse, but even though we know we should probably do something different, why are we so damn des destined to do the same thing over and over and over, knowing in the back of our minds we're probably going to get the same result, rather than trying something different, breaking out of our shell, breaking out of our comfort zone, to maybe open up a door to more positivity in our lives? <laughs> well, we keep beating things over and over and over again until we don't. I mean, finally, there comes a point where we just get sick of that. I mean, because it's not working. So, I mean, why why keep repeating something and expecting change? I think Einstein said something like that. You know, <laughs> you're expecting change, but you're doing the same thing. So it comes to a point in your life where you just get damn sick of it. You know, you just get sick and tired of the same old regime, and it helps you to, you know, open up into okay, well, that's not working. I'm going to try this thing, you know, and I'm going to give it my all. And if people that actually do that with full intent of actually growing in their life and changing will have the change that they need. Some people change so far, and I know that um, my mother did this. She became really, really spiritual, and she changed so far. And um, suddenly my brother died in a car accident. So then she was like, oh, well, I don't believe anymore because that horrible thing happened. The thing is you can't always believe just when all the great things are happening. I mean, that's half of the point of having faith is, you know, and, and having trust in, in life and things that go on because we can't always just, okay, this is wonderful for me and I'm living the high life, so now I'll, I'll believe. But as soon as something goes wrong, I'm just going to, I'm not going to believe. So people have got to come to this point in their life where no matter what happens, that they are opening this door and that negativity in their life and that way of thinking is not going to exist anymore. So it's changing your way of thinking to um, a better way of thinking, and then it just grows from there. 
I just had an interesting question that was directed right at me in live chat um, about your book, Angelica. I didn't say, ask, do you have it? Well, yeah, I have it, you dingbat. How would I have, would I have gotten Be Divine on the show <laughs> if I didn't have it? Anyway, that's terrible. I just said that. What, what a negative thing to say with such a positive <laughs> yeah. follow-up. Boy, I'm a jerk tonight. Um, she asked, what was my favorite part? And my favorite part really came in the beginning. And I don't know if we talked about this the last time that you were on, but automatic writing. Allowing oh, yourself. Oh no, we, did. we didn't talk about no, it. No, we yet. didn't. But let's talk about it now. This is killer. Um, again, divinemiracles.com. Be divine, my guest. Angelic guidance is the book. But we, the the whole idea of opening yourself up to the idea of just, you know, pure creativity. Just allow anything that comes in to be put down on paper, whether it's you that's deciding what's written or somebody else that might be pushing you in a certain direction, an angel perhaps. What a great concept. What a good way to just, you know, just be as a human being. Yeah, definitely. And, and we, you know, we need to, we are creative beings and we need to express ourselves. And I think a lot of people, when it comes to automatic writing, they have this belief that some weird thing is going to take over their hand and write for them. <laughs> and, you know, I, that, I used to think the same way. I thought, oh, no, I don't want to do that because, you know, something awful is going to, you know, stand there and take over my hand and write for me. But, sure. you know, it's a, it's a form of channeling information and really all of the best books in the world have been channeled in that way. They just might not realize that that's what's happening. But the most inspiring books that you've read have been inspired from somewhere, you know, and uh, – People have written and not even realized that it's coming from, from divine guidance or from angelic guidance. So I wanted to teach people how to do it in a safe manner um, because, I mean, you know, again, you want to always be sure that whenever you're doing anything with your spiritual um, work that you're protecting yourself morning and night. And that's just a matter of saying, okay, I now cloak myself in white light and I ask Archangel Michael to be with me and protect me and guide me. And uh, when you start asking questions to the angels, you know, you write it down on a piece of paper, you'll be surprised at how quickly you are able to feel a response and then interpret it on the paper. But, um, you know, you could say something like it's got in the book here, Dear Archangel Michael, I thank you for being with me today and helping me to clearly hear and write your messages. What message do you have for me today? And so you write the first thing that you think of. And uh, that will be the answer. And from there, it starts to get deeper and deeper and deeper until you have, you know, I've got one thing there is about eight pages long or something from, from Archangel Michael. So, yeah, once you start, it, you, you'll you just get better and better and better with more practice. And, uh, yeah, you won't have to be worried about some scary hand thing taking over. <laughs> Let's grab a call here. And actually, Janice just wrote back, thanks for being gentle, Mark. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave, let's grab a call here. Hey, you're on the edge of the unknown. Who's this? Hi, Mark. This is Dave from Lovejoy. Hey, Dave. And I would like to ask the one very important question. This has been a great show. The, uh, yeah, it's been wonderful, huh? I appreciate <laughs> that. Well, other other, than, other my, than Janice being is, mad at me. Hey, Dave, other than Janice being mad at me, everything else has been fine. <laughs> no, it's been great. <laughs> I know we got limited time, but I just want to hear your thoughts about because Mark asked a great question, and my thing is, was this divine guidance when the Book of Revelation was written? Was John um, guided by the angels and that helped him to write this? Because I know he was in a half-sleep state, I think, when he wrote this. I want to hear your right. answer to this. So I'm yeah. going to sit back. Okay, so from what I understand, the entire Bible has been written through divine guidance. So whether it's through the angels, through God, through source. However, what, we're, what we receive or what we're looking at in the Bible <laughs> has been changed so many times over that it's hard to know what's what anymore. But the original concept of the whole thing was that it was actually channeled messages. These were messages that were given from the divine to the prophets and, you know, written in, in such a way that we would, we would understand. Although some of the things in there are a little bit negative, so it may have gone a bit wrong some places, but that was the original idea of it. Okay, now one, one other thing too is in the Bible, uh, here was, this is something I was going to ask you, I was hoping Mark would, but... 
Daniel, I think it's Daniel, no, in the, in the book of Revelation, it mentions what an angel looked like. Do you know what that is? And can you talk about it? Because Mark talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago about the Mothman, and that actually sounds like the Mothman. Mark, thank you very much. <laughs> Good night. You got it, brother. Thanks, Dave. No worries. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Am I supposed to answer that now? Sure, go ahead. We got a couple of Oh, no, minutes. <laughs> I was just saying, like, some of, the, <laughs> some of the images depicted in the Bible, you know, is quite, um, you know, fearful and scary. Um, I've never seen angels look like that, well, how they've been described. And, you know, honestly, um, I've actually only seen a handful of angels up, up close in person and they've never looked like what they are depicted like in the Bible, except for the fact that they are, um, you know, a glowing kind of an energy. There is there is a glow, I guess you could say, like a halo around them, but it, it encompasses the whole body. So I think there is a lot of things in the Bible and, and in any of the, the holy texts that have you know, been changed and adapted to suit and, you know, to, con to control people in a fearful state as well um, over the years. So you really have to have a personal experience and, and feel for yourself what you think it's like and what you feel it's like um, and make your own assumptions about the, about the angels or about spirituality on the whole. Hey, we are up against the end of the show. This went so this went oh by so God. fast. <laughs> Holy cats, right? Like two hours, like gone. You are coming yeah. back on in the summer, if you will be so kindly to do so. Sure, I would love to. Excellent. Be divine, it would, my guest. It would be the winter for me. <laughs> right? Be divine, my <laughs> guest here on the edge of the unknown. I have to get out of here. DivineMiracles.com. Make sure you, you check me out on Facebook, Edge of the Unknown Radio Show. And we've got... Another cool show coming up next week with Dr. C.K. Quarterman. Everybody, thanks for hanging out with me late on a Mother's Day Sunday. Remember, 